Hello, thank you for watching. In this very short video, I want to explain what a trademark attorney does, a trademark attorney. Um, in, a, in another video, I, I, I explained a little bit about what a patent attorney does. In this video, I want to explain what a trademark attorney does. Uh, as you can see on this board, I divided the work of a trademark attorney in, in three sections. First section, which, which is called the prosecution section, prosecution type work, a second section, enforcement, enforcement type work, and litigation here uh, when things have to be uh, litigated in court. Uh, in the first section, the prosecution, the prosecution um, uh, section, uh, oftentimes the, the, the work begins with the registrability analysis. Um, the client wants to know whether or not the mark will be registered by the USPTO if an application is filed. Um, a, a trademark search is conducted and see what similar um, trademarks may be out there in the USPTO database and a registrability analysis it's conducted and the client is, can be advised whether or not the USPTO is likely to register that trademark. Uh, that may also include what we, it, could be, it could be called the freedom to operate um, analysis. And we recommend that, we recommend what is called a comprehensive trademark search, which includes the USPTO database, but also the 50 states, right? Certain trademarks can be registered with, with the state secretary of state uh, uh, office, for example, uh, or could be there some DBAs, right? Some business names, some DBAs that may be similar with the trademark. Uh, so that those comprehensive trademark searches is something we recommend when, for example, the mark is just being adopted, right? Um, you, are, you want to launch a new business and you choose a name for your business or a name for the product or service you want to launch. Uh, before the adoption of that trademark, we strongly recommend conducting a comprehensive trademark search or if, you could, if we could call it a freedom to operate search as well, an analysis to see who might be out there uh, maybe using the same or a similar mark that could cause problems down the line. Um, that's very important because under U.S. trademark law, whoever uses the mark first in commerce has certain priority uh, and that could be a problem if you just adopt the mark now. That user is uh, called sometimes a senior user and may have superior rights and you cannot, um, you cannot take that away from that senior user. And the senior user may be able to force you out and to give up your mark. So. Uh, this is one type of work that trademark attorney does. Again, registrability analysis and, and the more expensive recommended, especially when you adopt the mark, uh, comprehensive trademark search or freedom to operate search and analysis. Uh, another type of work, obviously, let's say a search is conducted and it comes a positive, or let's say the client used the mark for, I don't know, uh, let's say 10 years without any, any problems, any issue, no, nobody bothered him. Uh, but he wants to register now uh, to make sure he has protection for the entire United States, then we could be engaged to just do a trademark application. We will prepare the trademark application and follow with the USPTO. Now, that may seem as an easy process, uh, as a s simple uh, uh, filling of a, of, a, of a form online, but actually has a lot of uh, uh, landmines, you know, there, uh, for example, using commerce has to be clearly and, and truthfully stated. The dates of using commerce, the, the quality of the specimen which proves how the mark is used in commerce if used in, using commerce is claimed in the application, uh, because you can also file what is called intent to use applications. But if use is claimed, then you need to provide a uh, good specimen to prove that and you know the mark may be descriptive and you may need to disclaim certain terms so it has a lot of nuances in a trademark application which if not properly done could undermine the registration process and even worse the validity of the registration that may issue uh, a lot of people uh, a lot of the, a lot of time people think that if you get a registration from the USPTO it's it's an absolute proof that you are the owner 
of that, of that trademark. That's an absolute misconception. Any registration can be invalidated, can be canceled. For example, uh, I mentioned in the, the, uh, earlier, if there is a senior user, somebody used the mark for the last five years, and you just adopted the mark now, and you went through the process, got the registration, that senior user could go back to the USPTO and prove that he's the senior user, used the mark before you, and on that basis, cancel the registration. So not all the registration are, are um, absolute uh, uh, evidence that you are the owner of that of that trademark it could be invalidated and how you do the application has a lot to do with that so the application has to be done very very carefully now the trademark attorney will also respond to office actions re actions received from the USPTO examiners the USPTO has attorneys working in the trademark office and they are uh, examining the applications they are actual attorneys and they will uh, issue office action sometimes. Maybe they find a similar mark that is registered or pending before the USPTO. Or maybe, um, maybe they find the mark descriptive, or maybe they find the, the specimen defective, or some other. Um, maybe they will require the disclaimer of some of the terms of the, of the trademarks, uh, trademark. So for various reasons, the examining attorneys at the USPTO may issue an office action. It's the job of the trademark attorney representing the client to fight that and try to resolve that with the examining attorney at the USPTO to get the registration out. In the next section, this is about enforcement of trademark rights, right? So let's say a client has a registration, has a trademark, has a registration, and somebody's infringing that trademark using a similar uh, name or an exact name uh, or exact logo um, in, in the marketplace. We will do first an infringement analysis to, to, to ascertain that indeed there is infringement and then we will send a cease and desist letter and you know ask the, the infringer to stop or maybe propose a licensing deal and if it doesn't stop of course we will go to the next phase, the next section, which will be filing a trademark lawsuit in court and go possibly all the way to trial if the, if the dispute is not settled. So uh, during the enforcement phase, we, we enforce trademark rights of our clients, right? That's the job of a trademark attorney. And we, of course, in, in reverse, right, we also defend clients. Sometimes the client receives a cease and desist letter, so we will need to look into that see if there is infringement by conducting infringement analysis. And if there is infringement, maybe suggest to client and help the client negotiate a licensing deal. Um, or if there is no infringement, finding that off even uh, by finding a, a, a lawsuit in court to uh, prove that there is no infringement. So these are, this is the type of work a trademark attorney does on a regular basis. Now please note that not all trademark attorneys will do all of this. Some trademark attorneys will just stick with the prosecution. They just want to apply for trademarks and get them uh, registered. They do not want to deal with the litigation. Some trademark attorneys will not, will not even want to deal with the enforcement. Uh, and some trademark attorneys will do the prosecution and enforcement, and some will do all prosecution, enforcement, and litigation. I, for example, I do all three, prosecution, enforcement, and litigation to help my clients. Well, I hope this helps and gives you a short overview of what a trademark attorney does. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.